Good morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Kim McDowell. I teach math. I live in Het West, the best dorm on campus, and I am the assistant coach of the amazing JV field hockey team, who, by the way, is undefeated in away games on turf. <laughs> yeah. uh, today, I want to share with you my love of sports and tell you about all the amazing lessons and gifts that sports has given me and my family. What a perfect time to do this, too. We have numerous teams here at Brooks in the playoff hunt. We are in the middle of the World Series, which, by the way, amazing last night. There was a no-hitter. Even though it was the Astros, it was beautiful. Uh, the World Cup is right around the corner, and the NFL is getting really interesting, especially if you are an Eagles fan. So I grew up as an Army brat in a soccer family. For me, everything about my childhood started with this picture right here. The guy on the left is my dad, Gene Roger Farmello. The guy on the right is my Uncle Scott. My dad and my Uncle Scott married sisters from Greenwich, and they each had four kids. I am the oldest of all of them, and we all played soccer, some of us better than others. I started off as the best player in the crew because I was already 5'9 in second grade but I quickly fell to about seventh place ahead of my little sister, Kara. They called her Thunderfoot, but I was much better than that foot of hers. Next slide. Uh, hi, Dad. Uh, this is my dad. This picture was taken the day I was born. He was in Vietnam, I was in Greenwich. Like I said, I'm a true <coughs> army brat. Um, my family moved around a lot. One thing we could always count on was playing soccer. No matter where we lived, California, Kansas, Georgia, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Texas, North Carolina, Germany, all four of us played soccer, especially in Germany. My brothers played for cl clubs like Spielvereinigung and Hertha Nordrei. Girls weren't really allowed to play, so I slowly phased out of soccer and started swimming, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. So soccer helped my brothers and my cousins get into really good schools. It gave them a physical outlet for their infinite energy, and it gave them a brotherhood of friends that they still have today. But soccer also caused a lot of trouble in my family. Let me ask you this. Your big brother is getting married in Ohio, and you're the best man. But you have a soccer tournament in California the same weekend. What do you do? Yeah, that was quite the debate in my family for a very long time. There were two extreme sides, and it wasn't pretty. Poor Brooks, what a great name, right? My cousin Brooks. He was the best man, and he flew from Cornell to Stanford, played in a game, then flew from Stanford to Ohio, was there for 45 minutes, gave a great best man speech, got back on the plane, and then flew back to California. Or how about this one? My youngest brother, John, was probably the best soccer player in our family. But he really didn't like soccer at all. One day, his junior year at Yale, he just up and quit. It was too intense for him, and he wanted to put his energy into other places. This is a kid whose nickname is Far Too Mellow. We're the Farmellos. He was Far Too Mellow. Once again, my family was divided. One side said, Farmellos aren't quitters. How dare he quit? The other side said, good, good for him. By the way, don't talk to Mark about this. He's still very upset. <laughs> Thinking back, I remember one soccer game when we were living on Fort Ord, and my brother Jeff, Jeff's team was, was losing. My mom, who's usually very quiet and introverted, was screaming at the ref. The ref stopped the game, came over to the sideline, and said to my father, Sir, if you cannot control her, she will be asked to leave. My dad smiled and said, Sorry, father, I will take care of her. He was our local parish priest. <laughs> if you know my mom, that story is even funnier. So, soccer has many lessons to teach and many gifts to give. Soccer taught me that you have to be true to yourself and you need to be a good role model on and off the field. So soccer also taught me that just because you're good at something doesn't mean you have to do it. Now, back to me. As I said, I stopped playing soccer and started swimming halfway through my eighth grade year when we moved from Ansbach to Berlin. It was early in, 1980, in the 1980s, so the Berlin Wall was still up, and we were hundreds of kilometers inside communist territory. So to travel out of Berlin, you had to travel at night on the duty train. So every Friday night, 
At 8.45 p.m., I would board the train with the Berlin swim team. We were called the Barracudas. And we would end up in Frankfurt, Germany by 5.30 a.m. Saturday morning. From there, we would travel all over Europe, excuse me, all over Europe to our swim meets. We would stay the night with the host family and then come back home on Sunday in time for school on Monday morning. It was amazing. I was a good swimmer, but I was a better traveler. Swimming gave me that gift. All those hours in the pool were worth it because I got to see the world. Now, fast forward to when I met Mark. Unlike the obnoxious Farmellos, Mark was a humble and quiet athlete. His sports were ice hockey and baseball, and he was very good at both of them. When we had our boys, Mark built a 60 by 100 foot ice rink in our side yard. We also had a wiffle ball field in our front yard. Inside, I wasn't allowed to decorate or put anything on the walls because Mark would throw BP to the boys in the house. I was raising and living with baseball and hockey players. In Vermont, hockey season is about 10 months and baseball season is about two. So I had stinky hockey bags in my living room and sticks in my kitchen all year round. Hockey is just what my family did. So next slide. So that's my son, Max. He just loved being on the team. He was a great player, but a better teammate. Next slide. This is my son, Theo. He just liked to skate fast. Um, all of this, next slide. <laughs> There's Molly. <laughs> all of this was just a long road to men's hockey with some highlights that were pretty fun. When Mark and I decided to have another child, Mark made me sign a contract saying that he could still play hockey on Tuesday nights and baseball every weekend. I did. I signed it. Uh, the day Molly was born, the boys had two hockey games in the morning. Mark went to both of them. And he had tickets to the UVM BC men's hockey game that evening. He did not make that game. Uh, but Molly and I were at a rink before she was three days old. Um, I love that Molly is a soft, softball and hockey player too. Joshua 1.9 is her favorite Bible verse, and she takes it to heart. I see Molly being courageous and strong when she's in the batter's box and when she's fighting in the corners for the puck. I love her positive attitude when she sits on the bench wanting to be in the game. Like I said, sports has given us many wonderful gifts. Even though my kids love hockey the most, they are better at baseball and softball. So now we are mostly a baseball family, and my dad would be really happy. Next slide. So again, that's Max, and then the next one, that's my son, Theo. And then lastly, there's Molly. All right, despite his love of soccer, for some crazy reason, my dad defined himself as a Red Sox fan. He would listen to every single game on the radio. When he first got sick, he had to be in a rehab center for quite a few months. Thankfully, the Red Sox finally figured out how to win, and they won the World Series. Those games were my dad's lifeline, and despite, being Yankee, despite me being a Yankee fan, I am very thankful for those Red Sox. They gave my dad hope and joy during a really hard time in his life. My two boys play professional baseball, and that's been an amazing experience for our whole family. Their love and respect for the game gives them so many gifts. Theo says that he is completely himself on the mound, and he finds peace when he's there. What a wonderful thing to know where you can find yourself and to find peace. That's why I love sports. Next slide. <clears throat> All right. Unfortunately, my dad died of Agent Orange-induced Parkinson's. He was exposed to it in Vietnam and died 45 years later. He was really lucky, and so were we. Over half the men in this picture died in Vietnam within years of this picture being taken. When my dad was alive, he would go early in the morning on Veterans Day or Memorial Day and visit the Vietnam Memorial. He would find all his teammates, rub his hands over their names, and pay his respects. We had no idea he was doing this until he couldn't do it anymore and needed some help. So we went with him. Um, it was fun to go into the city, and we too could pay our respects. We would hear some great stories about soccer and some great stories about life. So thank you, Brooks. That's why I love sports.